the world according to Jesse. Yes, yes, yes. Dr. Stephen Greer joins me today from Washington, D.C. to discuss his latest documentary, Close Encounters of the Fifth Kind, and the Pentagon's recent UFO disclosure videos. Dr. Greer, welcome back. I got to tell you, UFOs mean ratings. And since the last time we spoke on this show, the U.S. and other nations have been working to create a militarized space forces. In other words, send the military into space. Is this a good idea? Well, two comments. Number one, we've been in space for a very long time uh, with uh, weaponized satellites. Basically, what the Space Force is, is acknowledging something that's already been around. It's a very bad idea, however, because we're not alone in the universe, and I think this move could be interpreted in a very unfriendly way. Uh, I think the sub rosa, the real purpose behind the Space Force, although I'm not so sure the president understands this, is to uh, begin to psychologically prepare people for a threat from outer space, which does not exist. I think you'll see this in the narrative of the uh, spinmeisters who released the Pentagon footage you refer to that's been on CNN and all the media. Uh, we know who those people are. These are masters of uh, counterintelligence and disinformation. And the narrative that's attached to that footage is, gee, it's a national security threat, which in fact it isn't. I think this is just more of a power grab to try to scare the hell out of people about something that's a non-existent threat. Now, the Pentagon, of course, has officially released three videos of alleged encounters with unidentified flying objects. First of all, have you seen the videos, and do they seem altered in any way? Yeah, I've seen them. Uh, they're authentic. They're not unlike other videos we have. As you know, I have about 980 top secret military and CIA and corporate whistleblowers on my team. So this kind of footage is nothing new. Uh, we also head up a team that goes out and does reconnaissance for these objects. And we actually have much more impressive footage than that, that I think your audience would like seeing in this new documentary, A Close Encounters of the Fifth Kind. But in terms of the, the sort of gun camera footage, uh, yes, I mean, it shows clearly sort of a disc shaped uh, object moving against a very strong uh, headwind, uh, moving in a way that a normal aircraft cannot. Now, what, what your viewers may not understand is that I have a letter here from Ben Rich, and Ben Rich was the head of the Lockheed Skunk Works, which is the top secret aerospace engineering research group for the big contractor for the government, Lockheed Martin. And Ben Rich uh, wrote in this letter, although it's in his handwriting, it's dated 1986. And he says, there are two types of UFOs, ours and extraterrestrial. So the question begins to be, and, and this is this thing that's a shocker for folks. Um, we haven't needed oil and gas and coal and nuclear power since the 50s. October 1954, classified projects perfected what's called gravity control. So a lot of these objects you see going up and down out of Edwards Air Force Base and the Nevada test range what pop culture calls Area 51, that none of us call it that, by the way. Uh, those objects are, in fact, many of them, uh, anti-grav U.S. objects. Now, there's another category. There are things that are more exotic that are interstellar vehicles. Uh, everyone on, in the deep levels of what are called unacknowledged special access projects, which is the proper name for a truly black project, and these USAPs, or unacknowledged projects, they have been working on this at a very high level. Now, the Pentagon, in releasing this footage, says, we don't know what these are, we don't know where they could come from, blah, 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 sort of an agnostic answer. And the person saying that probably is speaking the truth as they know it because of the compartmentalized nature of the secrecy of that person who is making that statement is probably not read into or briefed on those operations. Now, in your new film, a retired agent of the Air Force Office of Special Investigations claims his job was to give fake evidence to UFO organizations. What kind of information did he claim to provide, and what was his goal in doing so? 
Well, most of the information you see on this subject is in fact uh, carefully uh, curated disinformation designed to have a certain effect. So for example, uh, I asked him about, uh, you know, a, a deceptive uh, indication and warning, which as a military guy, you know that that's the what, the what the military call a false flag operation. And he said, oh yes, we would do these and we would create things that would look like an alien scenario up to and including abducting people, making it look like aliens did it for its psychological warfare value. In other words, I think the thing that people forget, this is one of the punchlines of, of this new documentary, is that Werner von Braun, who invented the rocket for Adolf Hitler, said on his deathbed, look, they're going to hoax an alien threat that doesn't exist to sort of further expand a global uh, elite militaristic control over the planet and that it's anathema to democracy. And he was very sick. I think he had liver cancer. And he said this to a member of my team, Carol Rosen, who, who was his spokesperson for the last five years of his life. Now, this is the guy who literally invented the rocket saying this and who had been in these covert programs. So um, what, what uh, this Air Force officer was saying is that he had worked as a disinformation agent, putting out false and frightening information. And sometimes just as he admitted, he would carry bags of cash to people who were senior people in the media to kill a story and to alter a story. So unfortunately, you know, I'm a medical doctor. I'm an emergency doctor that got involved with this back about 30 years ago. Um, as you know, I briefed Bill Clinton's director of the CIA and a number of other folks on this problem. And what I found is that you go down the rabbit hole very quickly because you have to begin to discern what part of this is information, what part of it is disinformation. But this, uh, it's not unusual to meet people who have spent a lot of their career in spreading false stories about the UFO subject who work in counterintelligence. Now, even if those UFOs on videos are human-made planes, one can see that they behave almost like nothing modern aerial systems have, planes or drones. Could there be tech out there that's breaking the laws of physics as we know them? Well, they're using physics that isn't taught that often at MIT, but is well known in classified uh, aerospace research. You know, my uncle was an aerospace engineer for Northrop Grumman, worked on the lunar module, put the first man on the moon, Neil Armstrong. So I've met people all throughout my life who worked in these highly classified areas, and it doesn't defy the laws of physics. What they're using, uh, if anyone out there is a scientist, it's a very high voltage VHV system that causes, uh, in a sense, a, the cancellation of the mass of an object. So it becomes essentially weightless. So it can move straight up. It can go 200,000 uh, kilometers an hour and make a right-hand turn. Uh, obviously, that would kill a normal jet pilot. They have no jet engines. They have no rockets. These are all very powerful electromagnetic gravitic. So in other words, there's an interface between the electromagnetic field and let's call it the forces of gravity that have to do with the mass of an object. So these things look like they float or they can stop and they can go from stopping to straight up at several thousand miles an hour. And we have a lot, I have in my archive a great many radar uh, tracings of these objects doing just that. So this is a, a whole new area of, of, let's call it science, energy generation, propulsion. And the good news about it is that if we can ever get these technologies out for civilian peaceful use, we'd be able to replace all the fossil fuels and nuclear power in the world, because this is an entirely new area that has very tragically, as Eisenhower said when he said, beware of the military industrial complex, has gotten out of control and has fallen into the rabbit hole of these super secret black projects. Wow, that is interesting stuff. In your opinion, how likely is it that the Space Force is set up to spy and gather intelligence on other nations? Well, I think it has a dual purpose. Most of these systems that are put up there have more than one system piggybacking on another. Unfortunately, and I'm not sure the president has been read into this, one of them would be to be a, a reconnaissance system for uh, spying on other countries. The other one, which is more stupid, frankly, 
uh, is that they are targeting uh, extraterrestrial vehicles with systems that are very powerful electromagnetic weapon systems. So in other words, a lot of people have heard this thing about Roswell. Well, I have an FBI document from the field agent and on the scene written to J. Edgar Hoover that we released. It's a, it was top secret. We got it, put it out. It's now the most viewed document on the FBI website. And it describes the fact that we had switched on a new type of electromagnetic system uh, that they called euphemistically a radar. That term is often used for things that aren't radar. And it hit those objects and they crashed. So we have, for a number of years, been targeting objects from these other civilizations, which is actually not science fiction. It's a very dangerous and foolish game being played. Uh, this movie that we've just released is all about what can we do that isn't stupid? Can we do something smart about this problem? And that the answer to it is we're training teams to go out and establish contact with these civilizations peacefully. Uh, and, and it's exciting. We have actually a whole training app that just came out that's called CE5 Con Contact App that trains people to do this. Uh, and it isn't as difficult as people would think. You need to know a few key things. And uh, it gets into some what's called borderland sciences uh, that are uh, very interesting because if you're dealing with civilizations not from this planet, they're not using cell phones that we think of. They're using technologies uh, kind of like what uh, Elon Musk, who you may have been following this, has a company called Neuralink to have it with by 2025 a system so you can think to your computer and it switches on. So these interstellar civilizations have communication systems that interface with directed thought, very clearly intended thought. And uh, it gets into some really fascinating science and technology. Mr. Greer, in your personal opinion, does religion contradict the belief in aliens? Does one cancel out the other? No, because the whole idea of a supreme being and of the cosmos is that it would allow for, you know, as, as Monsignor Balducci, who was the Pope's right-hand theologian, told me when I was at the Vatican, it'd be a terrible waste of space if the only intelligent life in the universe is on this planet. In fact, it, the, 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 such a creator would be pretty uh, ill-advised to, to leave intelligent life only to homo sapiens and that it's the certainty that there's uh, life out there. And his view of it and the Pope's view of it was that we're all children of God. There's one supreme being and we're all and, and uh, of the same conscious spirit. So I think that when I've spoken to people in various religions, unless they're the kind of far lunatic fringe who think that we, you know, rode dinosaurs bareback like the museum in Kentucky, you know, I mean, there are people who think that, of course, but if you're a reasonable person, spiritually and religiously, and you don't think the world is only 6,000 years old, um, almost all of those people are very comfortable with the idea that there'd be intelligent life all throughout the cosmos. And of course, astrophysicists are now saying that just in our own galaxy, there could be upwards to a billion planets like Earth that could support life. Unfortunately, we're out of time, Dr. Greer. I right. could spend another hour with you. I want, I want to thank you for sharing your insight with us, and I'd love to have you back again if you'd come. Thank you, Dr. I'll, Greer. I'll do it. Thank you very much. I appreciate you. Thanks for watching. Send us your comments on Facebook and Twitter for a chance to be featured in next week's episode. It's been a while since we've heard from you, and we'll see you then when we cover more stories ignored by the corporate media. Absolutely, and remember, Taking weapons into space, bad idea. And remember, when the government lies, the truth becomes a traitor. Stay vigilant. The world according to Jesse.